Now we're going to hinge the bellows. Make sure that you have this the correct way around. I'm going to put glue on both of these strips. I have a one inch wide piece of leather I'm going to glue on there. This glue on here somewhat sparingly. You don't want excess getting squeezed out if you can avoid it. You do have to have enough to soak into the rough side of that leather. Hold that in alignment. Put your leather on there. Push it down. Bend that over, make sure everything's lined up on this side. I'll put a couple of clamps on there for a little while. We'll come back to that. I've clamped this in a vise just to hold it vertical. I've got a wood spacer in here to, so the hinge is flat and square. Glue a piece of leather across this side. I'm going to try to avoid putting glue directly on that part of the leather. No sense making that any stiffer than it has to be. We want it to bend there. And you'll be a lot happier if you keep your fingers out of this glue as much as possible. It is very sticky. I just push that down, make sure it's good and tight. Clean up any excess. Now we let it dry. I have some leather from an old leather jacket, one that was never worn, but the leather is fairly old. And none of the pieces in this jacket are long enough to make a bellows. I laid out a three-quarter inch strip on the rough side and on the smooth side. I'm going to use a felt and leather glue that's used by people that work on organs for a living. It takes quite a bit on this side. Not as much on the smooth side. So clean up with water while it's still wet. Once it dries, it's supposed to remain flexible. And I've got a piece of packing tape here and here just holding that leather a little bit taut. I don't want to stretch it, but I don't want it curling up on me. And I'm doing this for two reasons. One, just to see if it'll work. The other reason for doing this is I want to see how hard it is to make one of these bellows before I commit a good piece of leather. So this will give me a little practice without costing too much. I had it sewn by a shoe repair guy, the length of that just to reinforce it. This part of the bellows is just going to be bending up and down like this. If I hold this up to the light, I can see the holes from the stitching. So now I'm going to take the leather and felt glue, which remains pliable when it's dry, and I'm going to push it down in alongside of these stitches. I'm going to try this from the shiny side, and hopefully I'll be able to clean it up a little better. 
you can see where that glue is going down into between those threads. This is only getting pressurized to 5 inches of water, which is just a little over 0.15 psi. And I think this will be quite sufficient, he says. After that dries, I'll decide if I'm going to do the other side or not. I have given the shiny side of the stitching two applications of glue. I can still see light trying to shine through a little bit. So I'm going to take two pieces of packing tape and put it on either side of the stitches on the rough side so it's a little bit easier to clean up the excess. I don't want glue all over everything. away from that glued edge. We don't want to accidentally tear that open. I took an old jacket apart, got this leather that's about one millimeter thick and it's a little bit stiff, not quite thick enough for the valves. And I found some white leather that's real soft and then I used the felt and leather glue Put the glue on the textured side of the brown leather, attach that to the white, put that on a smooth surface, put a board on top of it with some weight until that dried. Now I have these one and a half millimeter thick flappers for these valves. The fish glue is very tacky, very, very sticky. Has the advantage to clean it up with water, and they say you can clean it up with water after it dries. fingers out of it. If we watch this flap, it works quite well. We're going to take and we're going to make a cut from about here to here. I take that cut to about an eighth of an inch or so from each side. And now that flap falls faster and flatter. Now I'm going to take a little fish glue right in the center there. Just take a strip of leather. Glue that on there and let it dry. And we're just anchoring one end of our restrictor strap. That restrictor strap is going to keep this flap from going any higher than that and prevent it from possibly getting bent over this way inside the bellows. I to mark where I'm going to put the glue. Just a spot. I'm just making that to where a pencil just fit under there. It's not tight, it's just snug. I want to cut these out, keep a smooth, straight edge. And you do not want to curl this cardboard, stay flat.
Now I'm gluing these onto this leather before I cut this out. This whole piece will help keep this leather in shape. Once I cut this out, it can move around too much on you. Not advertising any particular product, but using a Cheez-Its box, I cut out these stiffeners and glued them to the leather with the felt and leather glue. Sealing this sewn joint, you can see that most of that is covered by the cardboard. There's a little spot right here and here where it will be folded. I don't think that's a problem. I've sealed this area three times and I've sealed it on this side three times. I take a bright flashlight and I shine it through that stitching. It'll glow like a lampshade. I don't see any bright spots of light until I get all the way out here on the outside edge. There's a couple of bright ones, but that's not in an area that's going to be used. So all of those appear to be sealed pretty well. And that's the same when I check this one. Take this leather, fold it where it goes in like this, roll that top edge back, and set that in there. You just want to make sure the cardboard is all the way inside the frame. Just take and spread that fish glue along there. I put it on the leather so it can soak in. Put it on the wood. I got a little bit too much on there, but I think it'll be okay. And this real leather stretches pretty well, so we'll just flip that over. And we're going to pull it towards us and squeegee out some of that excess if we can. This is when you're going to get it on you. wet paper towel to wipe off some of that glue when you start getting kind of sticky. And that's about how long it takes for that fish glue to grab hold. Move this clamp down here. And now I'm going to work on this edge. Again I want to make sure that that cardboard is inside the frame. glue all along here and on the leather a little bit. Push some glue up in that corner. Put that glue every place that the leather is going to touch wood. Excess here. They have plenty of paper towels ready. Wet paper towel and some dry ones. Make sure that leather is pushed down on the wood solid. And we're going to wait on that fish glue for a few seconds here. Let that grab hold a little bit. We turn around and we do this side. When it's all done, you can see where I cut that edge. And there's still one piece of wood to go in here to kind of support that a little more. I put it on its side and I keep that clamp shut make sure the cardboard is completely inside the frame. Get some glue up in this corner to seal any possible leaks. Pull this leather back, glue that all the way down there and push it down tight. Do the same thing for this. And I rolled the leather over on the bottom and on the end and that seals those corners. This piece of leather was a little bit short. You'd be better if it was a little bit longer here. Somehow that got cut short. 
And on the side where the, uh, the seam on the leather, that was a little more difficult to get that to, uh, to stay down flat. I just took a piece of wood and put it across there and used a clamp to put some pressure on there for a little while. And I tell you, that fish glue is good stuff. It would take longer to make one of these if you didn't have the fish glue, that's for sure. As far as working, you can see the top flapper valve is, is working. And I can see that the bottom one is working even when it's inverted, so that's a good sign. If I put a plate across here, inflate the bellows and hold that plate down, that bellows is holding pressure. All I'm doing is I'm holding that flapper valve down. It's going down very slowly, but in terms of practical design, I think that's working pretty well. Moves quite a bit of air. So, two bellows. It's the first one I put together. And the second one. Those will sit like that. And the reservoir will sit like that. The next project will be the reservoir.